Good morrow, my lovely little ghosts, and welcome to the Dark Orchard. I'm Laura, and this is a water parks video. As I said in my intro, this is a water parks video. More specifically, I saw the anti tour live stream, and I'm going to be talking about it. So let's jump right into it. Water parks, much like other bands, have hosted a live performance show. This show, of course, comes at the same time that they have announced their newest album, Greatest Hits. That's what it's called, Greatest Hits, because we had Fandom, now we have G, Greatest Hits. Not Graffiti, it is Greatest Hits, 100% confirmed. So, before the show started, I convinced Sarah to watch it with me. Big achievement! So, after having some Taco Bell, we grabbed a bag of Reese's and we cuddled up to watch the show. The Anti-Tour. I get notifications from Jeff, Austin, and the Water Parks official Twitter. So it was really cool to see that they were live tweeting a little bit before the live show went live. And of course, their tweets are always funny, top-notch entertainment. So before the stream started, you got to see this really cute screen. And I love this picture. I love the yards upon yards of crushed velvet and the way that their outfits match the fabric. The way that their outfits are just a full single color, just like the stripe of fabric. Love it. Love the whole thing. When the live show started, it started off with a short announcement advertisement thing for Greatest Hits. And it was little clips of the two songs that had been released so far, Snow Globe and Low Key as Hell. And it was just little short clips from those music videos at the beginning of the stream. Then it went dark and we got to hear a little giggle from Austin and a little bit later it began. So before I get started talking about the live show, you may have seen my video where I went to see water parks live before the big 2020 stuff happened. It was amazing. I'll link that video at the end of this video because it was such an awesome experience. And not only was it an awesome experience, but it was a beautiful show. And watching this live show, they brought the same energy, the same chaotic energy you actually feel at a water parks concert, they managed to bring that into the live stream. So the first song they played was Cherry Red. It's a very beautiful, melodic song. Really great song to get you started and sort of build up to heavier songs. Absolutely loved the background, the foresty background with like the cool bicycles and the fire hydrants and the like primary colors being represented in different objects. It looked really cool. And in this picture, you can kind of see the foresty background. It kind of reminds me of like, this lighting reminded me of Poison Ivy, like the Uma Thurman Poison Ivy, because that's the same like backlight colors that they used for her. So with the greenery and those colors, it just kind of gave me Poison Ivy vibes. This show was so unique. The mouth sounds, the awkward silences, the imperfections, the mistakes. I loved it all. It just, it kept you hooked the whole time. So let's talk really briefly before we get into the other songs that they played. Let's talk about Austin's outfit because I am positive I am not the only one that was trying to figure out what he was wearing. Thankfully, he knows how crazy we are and he posted a photo of what he was wearing. It's really cool. It looks like the Pepsi logo, but it says sexy. There's a Sonic. There's a Mario. Um, he had Bart Simpson on his shoulder. It's just really cool drawings and the nothing to do looks like the Nintendo logo. I thought it was really cool. <laughs> so it's just like a, a plain button up work shirt, but it's got like Sharpie style drawings on it and they're very good drawings. And the whole show, I was like taking notes on what I thought I was seeing and then he ends up posting a picture of it. So that made me really happy. You know how I am with clothing and fabrics and things like that. This, this was a big happy. So one thing that is overly obvious, and I talked about this in the Blackfell Brides review about their live show, but the most obvious thing is that there's no audience. And with water parks, 
a lot of their songs are fast paced. A lot of the lyrics are like flowy. They just blend into each other, almost rap adjacent. So of course, Austin's going to give out a breath. Usually at a normal in-person show, the audience fills in in those awkward spaces where he runs out of breath doing those songs, but there was no audience. So there was a little awkwardness of trying to interact with an audience that wasn't there, but that just made it even more genuine and fun. And he made jokes like talking to the internet and saying all eight of you watching knowing full well that there were way more than eight people watching. So after Cherry Red was Watch What Happens Next, and that was the moment that I realized that the, the sound quality was fantastic. The vocals were very raw, but that just added to the experience because it did sound more like they were live versus a pre-recording that had been doctored and messed with. I know there have been some live shows where they pre-recorded it and then they messed with the audio and it sounded more like a studio version of a song than a live version of a song, which isn't a bad thing, but it's something that I noticed. So the vocals were raw and clear and just amazing. They sounded really, really nice and it sounded like you were right there in person, like you were the one standing behind the camera. That's how, like, unfiltered it sounded. Even with the accompanying tracks, it still sounded like that. So then we transitioned, so then it transitioned into Dream Boy, and once again, Austin tried his absolute best to interact with the audience that wasn't there, but he tried through the screen, and it was absolutely precious. You could tell that he was just happy to be there, happy to be performing. And after Dream Boy, they played Telephone. And I love Telephone. It's one of my favorites. I love the story behind it. I think it's just a really cute, kitschy song. And it's one of those that I like to sing along to in the car. My favorite driving CDs of all time are Fandom by Water Parks, The Silver Scream by Ice Nine Kills, and The Ghost of Ohio by Andy Black. It felt very real and connected. And Austin even broke his tone knob during one song. Once again, the imperfections in the show are what made it feel like it was in the moment. And while we're talking about equipment and things, I really loved Austin's in-ear. The in-ear looked golden, like almost glittery. I'd like to actually just like see a good picture of it because it looked very pretty. And after Telephone, we got a new song. It's called Numb. And it actually was posted on their TikTok in a snippet just a few hours after the live stream ended. This song sounded so cool. Like, it sounds like it does kind of have a royal vibe, like their song Royal, but in a different way. So then they played War Crimes, and Austin laid down on the ground and sang the beginning of it. And during the breakdown, he said it's time to destroy all the tables. Once again, connecting with the audience who most likely were watching from their living rooms. So time to break all their tables. <laughs> There's little jokes like that that just made it super enjoyable. And after War Crimes, they played Reboot, which is another really amazing song. However, it had a bunch of blanks because it's one of those songs that's hard to sing. It's one of those where the audiences fill in the blanks, so with no audience, there were no fillers. It was just emptiness when Austin ran out of breath. But it's okay because we all were singing along at home anyway. And one of the biggest surprises for me was that they played an old song. They played the song Mad All the Time. And I'd, I've never heard that one live. And it sounded really, really good. During that song, Austin's in-ear got stuck. It like got hooked on his strap or something. And Jeff decided to walk over and fix it, which was just the most precious thing ever. And that was the moment where Sarah spoke up and said, I just want to fluff Austin's hair. It looks so fluffy. <laughs> she loves the way his hair looks, especially the undercut part that looks like it has leopard print, but in the primary colors. And another very realistic moment, a very in the moment kind of moment, was Austin burping and talking about how now that he's older, there's a influx of reflux and like relatable. 
Then he shouted out TikTok and played the song that was absolutely everywhere on TikTok, which is Sarah's favorite song by them because of TikTok. And it's also how Sarah knew about them at all. During this song, the facial expressions were on point. And they just seemed so happy. Like, I just cannot express how happy they seem to be just to be there. Just to be able to perform. They looked happy. Before the next song, which was Lucky People, Austin talked about the set. He was like, I'm just here in the most romantic woods you've ever seen. And bragged about the set and how awesome it looked. Then he transitioned into Lucky People. For this song, you really missed the audience roar. The, the bouncy energy and just the, the unity that comes along with an audience participating in a song. Sarah even said, oh my gosh, the poor baby, he needs an audience so bad. He does. He needs an audience because Austin has chaotic energy and a crowd is chaotic energy. So together it's perfection and it hypes up the crowd even more to have someone who already has that energy just built into them. So while it was fantastic in every way, this is a band that definitely needs their audience. They definitely need to be on stage in front of people. They're not a studio band. They're a in-person, hyperactive kind of band. They're just like an in-person, hyperactive band, and that's okay. That's awesome. It's honestly rare to have that manic energy, and it needs to be utilized. Next was another mostly acoustic song, and that was 21 Questions. There was even a moment where Austin paused and was like, the crowd usually sings that part. Then they played another hit, Not Warriors. The chaos is amazing. Sarah couldn't stop talking about how adorable his hair is. And she also came to the conclusion that her kindred spirit is Austin, mine is Jeff, and Logan's is Otto. <laughs> then, after that song, Austin tried to get a recording of himself swallowing water. So it was about four or five different takes of him just sipping water and trying to swallow it. He took his in-ear out so that they could turn the volume up and try to get that sound. And it was, it was so entertaining. It was so much like if you were actually at a show because he does random things like that and they're always really fun and funny. Again, I use the word entertaining because they are. They're usually super entertaining shows because it's not just let me play this song, then this song, then this song. I guess I can kind of compare it to a show performed by Andy, more specifically the Andy Black shows, because he would do jokes and stuff in between songs. And with water parks, they just mess around and have fun. So Austin announces that he's never played in a forest before, and he had everyone clap for the forest set because it looked phenomenal. He also thanked a bunch of people, which was really nice. He thanked the people working with him, his mom, all this other stuff. And then he said that was just to waste some time because the next song was hard for him to sing. But he also did want to thank those people. The song he said was hard to sing was Stupid For You, which is my favorite water park song. Hands down, right now, before Greatest Hits comes out, Stupid For You is my favorite water park song. And of course, it was my favorite song to hear them perform because it is my favorite song. He once again reminds us that Greatest Hits is going to be awesome. And I believe him because every water park's album thus far has been awesome. And then they transitioned into Low Key As Hell. And the smiles that came from these boys when they got to play a new song from the new album, it was just the happiest vibes. You could just really tell they super enjoyed playing the new song. Then he said to wrap it up and they played Turbulent, which was absolutely killer. Such a fun song. So during the Turbulent breakdown, he told everybody to tear apart their living rooms, which was just a fun image. 
I don't remember if there was actually a mosh pit at the water park show. I probably mentioned it in my other video if it was, but I can imagine a little moshing too turbulent for sure. That breakdown is just too awesome not to. And then the final song was Snow Globe, which is their newest song and their newest music video. I didn't do a review on Snow Globe music video, but it was gorgeous. I mean, they looked like they were in a snow globe. And I love snow globe so much. My tiny world is in your hands, so shake it like a snow globe. Love that line. Such a good line. The delivery, perfection. So before I finish up, let me also mention that the lighting was sick. I loved all the different lights. There were a few like flashy light moments, but for the most part, it was just like chill transitions and a lot of like reds and purples and just good vibes. So then as the show ended, it faded to black. The chat was still popping off so fast that you couldn't read it. And they once again showed the advertisement for Greatest Hits, giving the clip for Low Key as Hell and the clip for Snow Globe. So all in all, the Water Parks live stream anti-tour show was phenomenal. It was so good. It, it was funny. It was raw. It was entertaining. It was everything you expect from a water park show. Having been to a water park show before, the vibes were very similar. They were very kindred. So when slash if water parks does another live stream show, I suggest you check it out. It's an experience and it's very similar to the experience that you'd get at an actual show. So this was me breaking down the Water Parks anti-tour stream. For the comments down below, tell me your favorite moment from the stream if you saw it. And if you didn't see it, tell me what your favorite Water Park song is. And also tell me which one is your favorite, Low Key as Hell or Snow Globe. But if you don't talk to me about that, talk to me about something. Because I'd love for you to talk to me down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you come around again soon. Say bye. Bye.